if you're in your 20s or your 30s, you're thinking about whether you should get your fertility tested before you even start trying to conceive. I get it. Wanting information feels proactive. But here is why many gynecologists like myself don't recommend routine fertility testing for any young person who just wants to know a bit more about their body. Now, there are many at home fertility testing kits you can get or private clinics offering fertility checks. And most of these private packages lean on hormonal blood tests, MH, FSH and LH. And the idea is you check those hormone levels to see if your body is working as it should. Now, the problem is that the numbers in these types of tests don't usually answer the question that most people are really asking. Will I be able to have a baby when I'm ready? Now, the hormone results can be useful in context, but on their own, they're limited. For example, AMH, anti-malarian hormone, is a commonly used test to predict your fertility. But what it is, is actually an indication of your ovarian reserve. That gives you a rough indication of how many eggs you've got remaining in your ovaries because we're born with all the eggs that we're ever going to have in our life. But it doesn't tell you anything really about the egg quality, whether you're ovulating each month, whether your fallopian tubes are open, whether your partner has good quality sperm or whether your uterus is healthy if the lining is thick. Blood tests like AMH were not developed to test your fertility. They were developed to guide us in IVF treatment. So we test someone's AMH level to understand their ovarian reserve to help us to guide whether they're likely to respond well to IVF. It's not about predicting if you're going to get pregnant spontaneously. If you get told you have a very low AMH level when you weren't expecting it, it can come as a shock. It can be really upsetting. And it may potentially indicate that you might go into a premature menopause. You might be running out of eggs. But also I see people regularly who conceive despite this. And on the other side, having a reassuring number does not guarantee that you get to go home with a baby. There are a few reasons, as I've mentioned, that clinicians are cautious about using these hormonal panels as a general fertility checkup. Firstly, the results can give false reassurance or unnecessary anxiety. Also, they're often done as finger prick samples, which you might do at home, rather than a proper blood draw that's done in clinic. It's difficult to know actually if those results, the finger prick blood tests, are validated and comparable to someone who might have their level checked in a lab. So if you're concerned about your future fertility, hormone tests can be useful when you do understand their pros and cons, so the limitations of these tests, and you interpret them in context. But on their own, they rarely change the plan. The advice I'd give you doesn't really shift. Start trying to conceive as soon as you're ready. And if you're thinking about this because you're worried, you don't have a partner, you want to know how your fertility is and how long you can wait, I would say if you've been thinking about egg freezing, for example, the sooner you do it, the better. As we get older, the quality of your egg reserve declines. So the earlier you freeze your eggs as well, the, the likelihood of success if you need to use those eggs in the future. It's not to say everyone should go out and have egg freezing, but I'm just saying is if you want to do it, the sooner you do it, the better. So have you ever tried any of these at-home fertility test kits? Let me know if it changed your timing.